Hello and a warm welcome to all our participants. We continue our journey with Jason and the Argonauts past the Libyan desert. In this lesson, we will examine three adventures of the Argonauts. Their arrival at the Garden of Hesperides, their encounter with Triton, and the death of the giant Talos. The first adventure reads as follows. Having arrived at the edge of Lake Triton, the heroes set down their ship. Thirsty, they looked for a spring and arrived at the place where, only the day before, a dragon was guarding the golden apples in the field of Atlas or the garden of Hesperides. But it had been struck down by Her Heracles and lay lifeless against the trunk of the apple tree. The Hesperides told them where they could find the spring that Heracles, also thirsty, had made gush out of the ground. They drank from it and were grateful to Heracles, who even away from his companions saved them while they were overwhelmed with thirst. Several heroes, thinking they could join Heracles, went in search for him, but in vain. Then Canthos died, as well as the soothsayer Mopsus. The latter had walked on snake scales, which had come out from the severed head of Medusa. Claude, please explain this adventure. The crossing of the desert is only the first trial that awaits the seeker from the moment he has fully adhered to his life's goal, that is to say, from the consummation of the marriage of Jason and Medea. Exhausted by this journey, the seeker is on the lookout for a new energy, a new breath, an indication to continue his path. It is a image of the thirsty Argonauts looking for a source. They seek this source in the land of Atlas, also described here as the Garden of the Hesperides, where they landed somehow, somewhat by chance. Atlas is a titan who carries the sky on his shoulders, symbolizing the force that separated sp spirit from matter at the moment when mind took precedence over life in the development of humanity, when the gods were victorious in their war against the titans. He has seven daughters, the Pleiades, which symbolize the seven planes of mind as defined by Shorobindo, planes which humanity must climb to fill the chasm thus created by Atlas. Humanity and every human being must climb these seven planes in the course of time and reincarnations before they can reach the supramental. Then, man will be able to pluck all the golden apples, the symbol of true knowledge, total knowledge, entering, as it says in Savitri, the sunlit space where all is forever known. But even Heracles, in his eleventh labor, cannot access this total knowledge. He only gets three apples which will be returned to the garden by the goddess Athena anyway. In the midst of the Golden Fleece, it is obvious that the seeker, being only at the very beginning of the path, has only a very limited knowledge, even if he thinks otherwise. This is why the Argonauts cannot retrieve any apples or even reach Heracles. The killing of the dragon by Heracles, as told by Apollonius, is, to me, a mistake, because the knowledge always remains protected. No myth, apart from this one, ever mentions the death of the serpent Laden, or Heracles taking the apples at this very moment. For me, Apollonius meant that the road was still very long. After this episode, a double process begins that will finally lead to the death of Jason and Medea's children and the eventual return of Medea to her father. 
on the one hand, there is a weakening of the seeker's contact with this psychic being, which goes hand in hand with a certain inner closure. This is illustrated on the one hand by the death of the diviner Mopsos, son of Apollo, who symbolizes a certain psychic receptivity. He dies because the seeker is still subject to fear. The other death is that of the Argonaut Kantos, who represents inner openness. The second adventure is the encounter with the god of the deep sea, Triton, who ruled over this lake. The adventure reads as follows. The heroes then sought a way to leave the lake Triton. While they were wandering, the powerful sea monster, Triton, appeared. He was all also called Phorcys, or even Nereus, by his daughters. He had the upper body of a god, and below his sides, on either side, extended the two ends of a whale's tail. Triton offered the Argonauts a lump of earth and showed them the way out of the lake. It was a passage which they would find by heading for where the still wave of the deep is darkest. On both sides of the passage, there were steep white cliffs. He also advised them to always follow the land closely. Then Triton, pushing the ship, helped the heroes out of the lake and into the sea. Claude, can you expand on Triton and all that he symbolizes? In this passage, the seeker then receives support from a life force embodied by Triton. As the son of Poseidon, he is a power that rules over the subconscious. We cannot develop in this course the different planes of animal evolution of which man preserves the memory. Let us only give a few brief indications here. Nereus is called the old man of the sea and represents the first emergence of life from matter. For Kiss is linked to the appearance of the mind in life, the very first penetration of the fusional mind into the vital which manifests itself in the instinct linked to the animal group. The next animal phase will be the action of the separating force of the mind, represented by Keto, which leads to the constitution of the animal ego and leads to the vital separation from the group. This first approach to the deepest depths of human consciousness, this time, will take place without risk or great hardship to the seeker, for Triton is friendly. First of all, the seeker receives a gift of incarnation, represented by the cloud of earth, that is to say, help in his outer life. Then, he receives the inner subconscious advice to remain aware of his body and to follow the direction it gives the image of which is to follow the earth as closely as possible. He then approaches the most unknown and dark depths of his being. Finally, this subconscious life power helps the seeker to get out of this, that sort of subconscious trap where the deepest depths of human nature lie, the one that holds all the memories of evolution. For the seeker is not ready to face them, to contemplate the naked hell. The third adventure is that of the giant Talos, killed by Medea's evil spells. The adventure reads as follows. Having followed the recommendations of the gods, the heroes went along the Crete island and the giant Talos attacked them with stones. Zeus had offered him to Europa after having united with her. 
Talos went around the island three times a day to prevent strangers from entering by throwing stones at the boats. As he was made of bronze, some say that he heated himself to a white heat and then took the strangers in his arms to destroy them. He had a single vein running from his neck to his ankles, containing the ichor. As the heroes were about to turn back, the giant fell victim to a Medea's evil spells. With her gaze, she fascinated the giant who opened the vein in his ankle on a rock and died. The Argonauts are then confronted with Talos, which means he who endures. He was a bronze giant, that is to say a powerful protection, unalterable, but not indestructible. It was one of the gifts that Zeus gave to Europa after the birth of their two sons. It is a gift from the higher planes to the beginner who is entering a process of opening consciousness and mastery described in the myth of Europa. This gift is an ability to isolate oneself but protecting oneself from the outside in a somewhat rigid way. This protection is animated by the right movement. Talos is indeed equipped with a single vein through which runs the ichor, the blood of the gods, symbolizing the right movement from a gathered consciousness or higher will. This gift allows the seeker to, allow the, to isolate himself from external disturbances. If the beginning seeker did not have this protection, he will be destroyed very quickly by the powers that oppose evolution in the invisible. When the seeker embarks on this task in the union of Jason and Medea, this essentially physical protection is taken away, for the seeker has reached a stage of greater freedom, which should enable him to face more obstacles. Indeed, by the miracle of evolution, the difficulty encountered by a seeker who is on the path with humility at any given moment is always in proportion to what he can endure. So Medea, who represents the purpose of the soul, removes the nail from Talos' ankles, thereby removing the power that supports this protection, represented by the hiker that then escapes from the dying structure. Thank you and see you in the next lesson.